So you're coming towards the end of your degree and you think to yourself, shit, what now? Well, in this episode, I chat to David Reed, a lecturer in advertising at Swinburne University. And in this episode, we talk about how you don't really need an advertising or marketing degree to get into advertising. Really, it's about a mindset. And we talk about that in great detail. But then we also cover off the different initiatives that he's been involved in and some of the initiatives that agencies have set up with universities to help bridge that gap and get the best talent in the industry. As always, please like and subscribe below and enjoy the show. David, thank you so much for coming on to Shit What Now. Um, can you tell us about a bit about who you are and what you do? Yeah, absolutely, Chris. Like, I'd, I'd like to firstly thank you for inviting me, or I guess I've sort of reached out to you as well to join the show because I think what you're doing is absolutely wonderful. I think it's a wonderful initiative. Um, and, you know, I'm very much about employability for my students. So just to explain, um, my name's David Reed, and I'm a lecturer in advertising at Swinburne University of Technology and we're in Melbourne. So I've been an academic for about 12 years, uh, teaching advertising across a number of universities, um, starting in England, actually. When I, I worked there in advertising for a while, I worked for a, an advertising agency in the northeast of England uh, called Different, um, although they've rebranded and they're now called Everything Different. Uh, but they had offices in London and also in Newcastle upon time. Brilliant, brilliant. And that segues really nicely to my next question is... How did you break into advertising? What's your what's your story? Uh, well, it's a, it's a bit of a long story, really. I I went I moved on, I worked in the content side in advertising, so I was in production. Um, so I led television and also um, content across other other channels. Um, but before that, I'd worked in the creative industries, uh, primarily film and television. So I'd come from the content side. And I'd been a director and producer, so I'd worked in uh, film and television for you know it shows my age probably. Oh, nearly 15 years. Um, and I just got on really well with the creative directors at this agency. And they said to me, I don't know how I met them actually, but I just, um, they, they um, said to me, I think I was working as a commercials director at that stage. And they said to me, why don't you come and work for us? We can give you a permanent job. <laughs> Brilliant. And I thought, okay, as opposed to working job to job, a permanent job sounds quite good. And um, they were, there was a, a lovely creative director, a team, an, an art director and a copywriter. And um, uh, Chris in particular, who was the copywriter, we ended up with a really good friendship. And I think, well, at least I thought it was. <laughs> yeah. Oh, friend. Oh, friend. They, like, they, did, they didn't have an Antipodean. You know, they hadn't had work with had anyone in the agency from Australia or New Zealand. And so I was sort of like, um, I guess, um, uh, you know, slightly different employee in, within the agency. So I added a little bit of spice, I guess, at that stage. Um, so they just invited me to join the agency. And after a little bit of a trial, I stayed there for a few years. And um, yeah, it was a great experience. You must see a lot of grads coming through every year wanting to break into advertising. As someone who, let's say, works on the industry instead of in the industry, where a majority of people I talk to are in the industry, what are some of the common traits you've seen amongst grads? You know, what do the successful ones do to get to where they've wanted to get to? I think universities play a really important role, and I think increasingly so. I mean, okay, if you go back a decade, maybe two, you need to go back to a point where a degree wasn't important. Um, in fact, probably even a decade before that. You know, and I, I think there's still, I mean, if you look at the higher echelon of those still in advertising now, a lot of them never went to university. You know, you've got people who started in the mailroom concept and they still exist. Mm. There's, there's fewer of them. <laughs> but I think um, agencies now are, are a lot more critical about who they employ. Um, and I think a degree is a good place. You know, I think what we tend to try and train, well, certainly at Swinburne, is the requisite skills that are necessary to be an entry-level employee. Um, the, I think the complexity now is that an entry-level employee can be so many different types of, of people or person. Yeah. And what they used to be maybe 10, 20 years ago was a lot more singular, but now it's much more diversified. But um, um, no, I, I think it's important that we train the requisite skills, um, but you know, and they can be critical learning skills. But increasingly, they, increasingly so, there there are schools around technology, so awareness of um, different sorts of programs, uh, different sorts of software, but also probably an understanding of how to actually say ideate, create ideas, develop ideas, and work in teams. So it's you know, this multifaceted skills necessary which we teach at university. But you know that because you went to uni. 
Yeah. <laughs> Um, and we try and encourage that, that by um, and develop what we think is our cutting edge, or but I think a lot of universities do this, is we work in certain modules, we work very closely with industry. So by that industry relationship, we hope that we're building skills which are closer to the needs of industry today. Yeah, no, that's, a, that's a great answer. <laughs> no, no, it, it's, it's interesting, right? Because um, I, I really, I mean, the whole premise of shit what now is to help try and bridge that gap so to speak because let's be honest there is a gap and uh, you know some universities are better than others at doing it and i feel like a lot of the bridging is is actually done academia into industry specifically in advertising as opposed to advertising back into academia um and you know it's i guess just in your experience like you know what um you know, what's been your experience? Have you had people come out to you or have you had to proactively kind of go out there and try to engage with, with companies? Um, I, I do get um, uh, industry um, coming to me now. I mean, but it's take, I mean, it, that, I mean, you got to realise I'm not from Melbourne. So, I mean, I, well, of course, my long story is I'm from New Zealand, but I'd actually, I was working at a university in New South Wales before this. So when I came to join Swinburne, I had to rebuild my network. If you know what yeah. I mean, I had to build my Melbourne network because my network was a New South Wales network <laughs> or yeah. an English network. You know, I brought all that, all those contacts. But, you know, I think you reach out to industry or you go to events, you begin to build your professional network. And that's, I think, what industry-engaged academics do. So I think um, what I'd like to say is I know a lot of people who work in industry and I can reach out to them and have a conversation. And they similarly do that for me. So they will send me, you know, graduate roles or they will talk to me about internships that are happening. So it's a two-way relationship. Uh, and the other thing probably to talk about is actually um, what industry is doing now because we're increasingly so. I think they're thinking that they can train themselves. And, and you know, if you look at some of the majors, um, the Omnicoms or the WPPs, they're facilitating additional training themselves because I think they do see a gap. Um, so they're thinking, well, you know, we see universities as giving basic level training. What we need to do now is amplify those skills in certain areas because we don't think those skills are there. You know yeah. what I mean? So I think, I mean, I don't know if you've seen what WPP have just announced in the last few days. Um, Jim Monzies, I think that's how you pronounce his name, hasn't he? He's WPP, he's, he's the MD here. They've got this new program where they're running um, – a new um, online-based training program to develop the new executives of tomorrow. Their targeting is high school students or nearly, you know, students nearly graduating high school, um, those nearly graduating university, and those within in, within the first few years of industry. Hmm. So they've they've gone really wide, and what they're saying is dis they're discipline agnostic. So they're saying it doesn't matter where you come from. We're interested in what you bring. Um, we're interested in then training you and seeing if you fit our culture and I, our ideology and if you can be part of our company for the future. So it's a really wide canvas. And I, I, I think that's, you know, if, if, if I read that correctly, because if you think about WPP, they're still the, the biggest agency holding group in, in the world. Yeah. Um, I, well, we'll see. <laughs> There's a lot of others out there, of course, but yeah. they do amazing work across their their agencies. Uh, but they're saying maybe the future is something different and maybe we need to canvas wide in terms of our recruitment. So that's a signal to us too. I think that's a signal to universities because, you know, I teach an advertising program, for example, which was developed 11 years ago. And so, yeah. you know, it's, it's, and, and if you think about how curriculums develop, that's an old program. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, I don't know what you studied in, in, in England, but, you know, it, it's sometimes hard for universities to maintain currency. Um, so I think that, you know, and I, certainly if I think about our program, I think that certainly it needs a refresh, a refresh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, because, you know, I think we're trailing, you know, I think, you know, We'd like to be the leaders, but in a way, I think if you look at certain what certain um, agencies are doing in industry, uh, I can point to another one, Initiative, which is part of IPG Media Brands. They did, they've done a lovely online internship program, and I can't remember the name for it, but um, really groundbreaking that they launched last year during COVID. Um, and again, they, I think they're going to be running something similar or slightly different this year. But again, they're saying, look, look, we think we know 
what the skills are we need. So we developed this bespoke program um, and we think for, through that we can then facilitate um, or, or bring in or, 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 or find the graduate talent that we need for tomorrow. Yeah, and, I, and that's wonderful. You know, it's in a sense that, and, and they're not the only two. You know, there's other ones out there, of course, and I, I can, there's a long list. But it's wonderful to see industry leading um, graduate recruitment or, or seeking to develop the talent of tomorrow. We think we're doing the right thing. You know, we think we're developing the right programs, but in some respects, I think we're a little bit behind. I, I guess that's the one thing that I was like looking to achieve with this channel. It's like you don't need to. Get, sure, get into advertising because you love ads in the creative process, but you don't need to be the person that writes that ad. You know, no. we, we need we need people who are good with numbers. We need commercial people. We need negotiators. We need developers. We need artists. <laughs> you know, the, the, the skills are so broad. If we go back, the, 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 I think a lot of young people were historically, you know, or I don't know how far you go back, um, really, um, were attracted to this idea that an advertising agency was a trendy culture. You know what I mean? There's lots of parties. Everyone got drunk or whatever. Um, you know, the, the accounts were big. Everyone got paid well. And you're either the creative or you ended with you're either the art director or the copywriter, you know. And people forgot about every single other role. <laughs> yeah, Mad Men, Mad Men doesn't help. <laughs> well, that, that's okay. Yeah, you're right. You're, Mad Men doesn't help. So, yeah, it's a stereotype, isn't it? And I think if you look at an advertising agency now, a lot of them don't even call themselves advertising agencies. You know, that's mm -hmm. it's not that advertising is a dirty word, I don't think, because I, I think it's I think there's a great currency to it. But I just think um, agencies, if we think of them in a typical structure, they understand that what clients want, what brands want, is something much more diversified. Mm. You know, and, and I think that they are, and you can see that in the makeup and the structure, probably also of the agency that you're at. You know, the roles are, there's a multitude of roles um, covering vast areas from technology, including creative, through to suits, planners, you know, you name it, researchers, um, technologists, you know, there's, it's a vast array of skills required. Um, and I think, you know, if I think, you know, I reflect that back on our degree, because it's an undergraduate program, we're still teaching basic skills. You know, we're still, still take, teaching marketing theory. We're still uh, teaching creative ideation. We're teaching media planning. We're still teaching some you know, the basics. But that's it. It's the foundation knowledge. And I, I think that's what we need to understand. A degree is the foundation knowledge. Well, that's exactly. how I see it. <laughs> no, no, I, I think I think that's absolutely right. You know, for people that have a broad interest in it, a degree in advertising or marketing is the one for you. And then it's, it's only from there on in you can kind of try and narrow down exactly what you want to do within that space. Um, I'd always sort of say that a um, signing off in accounts is a good space place to start in the sense that you get a, a helicopter view of everything because you do touch every department so even if you do one to two years there you can always kind of you know pivot and, and get into something else at least then you've built up a currency of working in an agency but um yeah it is great to see that some of these bigger group uh, groups rather are um pushing initiatives to tell people that you don't have to just do advertising to get into advertising because let's be honest, a majority of the people that are in this on this side of the fence now, um, I you know d haven't done that. For context, I my undergraduate degree was geography because I thought I wanted to become a teacher, <laughs> but then I, I then I did a um, I did a master's course, a conversion course, and a master's in marketing and advertising. So, um, you know, yeah, it just showed. But even, I think even then, David, when even though that gave me a really solid foundation of marketing theory and practice and what have you, the actual day-to-day -day implications of what happens in an agency is just, you, you know, there's, you, you can't prepare for it, um, which is a good and a bad thing in, in a way, I guess, isn't it? Yeah. So you, what you're saying is that when you arrived, I don't know what your role you started when you, what junior role you started, but you were in the deep end. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. So a single so, swim. <laughs> yeah, 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 massively. And and look, that was very much the culture at Grey London. Um, we, um, we, you know, we all kind of, we all kind of, you, you'd get brought in. There was um, a many account executives as there are in some agencies. <laughs> uh, there, there, there must have been about 30 odd of us. And, um, you know, you were just kind of, yeah, you, you, you just go get put on a pitch in your first three months and it's like, off you go. And, you know, it's a lot of the time it's an attitude 
game and i think that's kind of a recurring thing i've seen it's just as long as your your attitude's there and the base level of understanding is there then you'll be fine that's really interesting because i um one of the things i talk to students a lot particularly when they graduate through or they gravitate through degreeing they get to final year what we tend to see a lot is a lot of students don't have well the nous and the passion and and i, I guess the you know the overriding motivation you know to to really get that job and to prove themselves and so i think part of our role <laughs> is you know as much of it's passed through an academic but is in, in, is putting into them that sense that it's a very competitive world out there and in order to to get that role they need to demonstrate a, a certain amount of hunger you know what i mean and that hmm. not only do they dem need to demonstrate their skills you know what i mean it's whether it's, it's if you think of the traditional skills of copywriting and an art direction they need to demonstrate that through a portfolio or whatever but no matter what a role it, it is whether entry-level planning or entry-level suit role they need to demonstrate that hunger um th through that application process they need to show that Definitely. they understand uh, what a brand in brand is, what 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 advertising is, why it's important, um, so they can actually get through the door. Because um, I, you know, I'm, I'm not quite sure how many you know how many uh, graduates the, the agency would be looking at. But if you think about it, they're looking at ten. It's going to be a fairly easy decision to take the ones that are that, that demonstrate similar skill sets, but are, have increasing motivation. Yeah. You know what I mean? And there, there's a hunger there. You know what I mean? To me, that's an easy, oh, we'll sign that person up, give that person a go because, you know, clearly they're the standout. You know, it makes sense, really. I, I think sometimes I get frustrated because some students don't demonstrate that, but they have really strong academic skills. And, but, but I know in the back of my head that they might not be able to make that jump, you know, right. what I mean? because, I, you know, it comes back to that decision for the agency is that they need to think about, the agency's thinking about how does this person, prospective recruit, fit into our culture? Yeah. And you, well, you know what, and you're at the hallway, aren't you? Is that correct? Correct. So, yeah. you know, it's, um, I mean, every agency is different, but, you know, it's, they're busy places. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, a busy, it's not, oh, I'm going to be helped through the role. You know what I mean? You'll be helped and supported to a certain extent, but you also need to find your own space and your own time and your own place. And you need to do that through, it's the amount of that is self-motivation. David, tell me more about some of the initiatives you've been working at the University of Swinburne to help grads get into advertising. So the last major one we had was funded by WPP AUNZ, uh, and it involved RMIT University Swinburne and the University of Queensland. So we had a number of agencies come in from the WPP group. Uh, we had a, a, the, um, um, we invited students from all the university partners, and we opened up to universities around Victoria. And the students got to ask questions to a panel that were speaking, sitting at the front of a large lecture theatre, and then there was a breakout session. So the students could, you know, ask um, the executives about jobs and industry, and they could do that networking. And that was an annual event we ran for a few years until funding fell over. <laughs> yeah. As it always does. It happens. <laughs> yeah, but it was wonderful, you know, and it involved everyone. Uh, but, of course, it takes a lot of effort. Um, the, the major project that we're running at the moment, which we're running for final year students, is called um, the Advertising Capstone Challenge. Woohoo! And that's a, a national challenge. And at the moment, there are three university partners. So the Swinburne University of Technology, Western Sydney University in uh, outer Sydney, and also the University of Queensland in, uh, up in, um, in Brisbane. And every year we work with an agency partner or can be a consultancy. And through them, we work with one of their clients. So they give us what's called a live brief. Um, and every, uh, there's every university capstone student is involved in the brief. And then we split all the students into teams. So there's teams of five or six students at Swinburne. So maybe if I had, say, 50 students that were split into maybe 10 teams of five, and all the students take on different roles. So there could be a creative team, a strategy team, an account team, and they work in a, like, like a small agency, for example. And they are all, they all address the same challenge and they're competing with each other to pitch to the agency and client at the end of semester. And so the, come the end of semester, they develop their pitches and six teams in total. So there's two teams from each university. They go, we, you know, last year we did it online, of course, because of COVID. Um, but the year before that, we all, they all went to the agency and presented to the client. And then the top team 
or the top teams, they win awards. So they win internships at the agency, they win mentorships, they win a trophy, <laughs> and they win some client products. So last year, of course, that was a bit of a, uh, a hybrid sort of situation, but we had Deloitte Digital as the consultancy, uh, and we had uh, Suzuki Australia as the client. The year before that, we had uh, DDB Sydney, and we had McDonald's Australia as the client. And then if you go back, you'll see different agencies and different clients every year. So it's a very pressured situation because the the briefs are, uh, at, there's a, a budget attached to the brief and it's a real budget and a real, you know, if you know what I mean. So they're multi-million dollar briefs in some instances. So um, not only need do they need to de develop a creative uh, uh, strategy, there's also a media strategy running along in parallel. So it's a lot of work uh, and very challenging. And I think um, the students find it very exhausting. <laughs> yeah. Probably not unlike working in a real agency because that's sort of the idea. The idea is to make it authentic. Yep. Um, and, you know, work, it seems to work really well. It's the probably the closest we get to working in an agency without actually being in the agency, if you know what I mean. So that's the major project that we run and we're running it again this year. So well, it's really lovely because what we have at the end of every semester is that the, the, the client and the agency, you know, there's a team, of, there's a panel and they go away to assess the finalists. So they review all the work and they make a decision about who's the top team and who's the runner-up. Um, and the, the feedback is wonderful. And I think the students really relish that. And um, the students, I've always got a lot of very positive feedback from students saying, look, the advertising capstone was wonderful. It was a, one of the, the, the best memories I have of my advertising degree. It's, uh, we work with industry. That's where I want to be, you know, and I can see what's necessary. It, it, it helped clear the picture for me or clarify it for me. Exactly. And, and it's people, it's the people that emerge from that are exactly the sort of people we want knocking on our doors or, or at least, or at least in our, or at least in our instance, snatching them up before they get to our doors, before somebody else picks them up. The elephant in the room is COVID, you know, and I think that, um, you know, and I think that's probably another story really. I mean, you probably know that for yourself, but um, what I'm looking at now is there's not a lot of opportunities out there for graduates. Um, and what I see is a lot of agencies scrambling to find talent. You know, I, you know, I yeah. get, I'm getting even at a lower school, you know, early, well, not, not graduate level, but, you know, um, they're looking for, a lot of agencies are looking for roles at fairly um, early career state, I think. And uh, what I'm getting a sense of is that they're finding it hard to find the right person for the role. Absolutely. Um, and I think if the borders were down, we'd see a lot more um, people from overseas coming in and taking up those roles. But because the well, I guess New Zealand's just opened up, so you know maybe there will be more Kiwis coming. <laughs> yeah. I tried to start a revolution, but didn't print enough pamphlets, so hardly anyone turned up, except for my mum and her boyfriend, who I hate. You know what I mean? But I think the limitation on on the recruitment base is making it challenging. Um, that's that's what I'm seeing out there at the moment. I don't know if you see that at, at hallway. Definitely. Um... I think we're kind of, I mean, not at the hallway specifically, but um, I have seen it out and around of, of grads who've talked to me who don't have a background in advertising whatsoever, but have in some way or form demonstrated as is that sort of passion and hunger we were talking about earlier in a completely different vertical coming in, coming in as an account manager and you go, fair enough. You know, there was, um, they, there was survived. <laughs> they, they, they survived. Yeah. Well, the specific person I'm referring to was, um, uh, worked at Barry's boot camp and you know she she I had a really good chat with her before and she had a basic understanding she went to a very good university in the UK but yeah she you know she worked at Barry's boot camp in their kind of op operations team and then wanted to break into advertising and um, yeah all right granted it took her a couple of years but she's in now and she is where she wants to be given all the initiatives you've led over the years between agencies and universities, what would be your advice for students looking to break into advertising? Ooh, that's a t it's actually quite a tough question. I, look, I, I think if, you know, if it's a student that is currently in a degree, no matter what the degree is, I think you just need to demonstrate absolute commitment and passion, you know, and I think that's half the battle because I think a lot of students just get a degree and are very unsure what to do with it. So it could be a degree in geography, for example. <laughs> Chris, it doesn't really matter. I think what you demonstrated is that if you've got the will, the passion, the commitment, you know, all these sorts of words that are really important and you are motivated, you can just go out and do it. You can get there. And I think agencies are open enough 
to, to see that. You know, they providing you can demonstrate an ability to learn, you know what I mean? You've got to, you've got to be willing to do, uh, put in the hard work, I guess, um, because it's, it's not necessarily an easy job, you know what I mean? It's not a job where you go, oh, I'm here now, I just spent a, an hour at work and have a coffee and a latte at the cafe. It's, you know, you've got to put in the hard yards. But if you can demonstrate that willingness to commit and contribute and do what's necessary, then you can get in. You know, there's an opportunity. And I think agencies are open to that. I know, And if they're not, then, you know, um, I think more fall to them because they don't understand that there's a bright spectrum of skills and a, a lot of, of young people with a lot of skills that are eager and hungry for the opportunity. Um, you know, agencies just need to be open to that. And, I, you know, I, I think they are. And, you know, well, most of them are. <laughs> yeah. The right ones are the ones you want to be working for are. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. You know, agencies that are clo- have a closed door policy probably shouldn't be in business. And I, I don't, you know, it's 2021. It's not 1921. You know, I, I think there needs to be an open door, door policy to people from all different kinds of types of cultures, to people from all different types of disciplines. Um, with but provide, and that comes back to those issue: Are they willing to learn? Are they willing to contribute? Are they willing to do the hard yards? And if they are, then fantastic. It sounds like a an easy win to an agency to me. <laughs> Absolutely, it's um, as someone who sits on the other side of the desk now, interviewing young people coming into the agency. What degree you do is a very small talking point. A lot of the things I'm looking for are um, examples where you've kind of prove someone wrong or have pushed beyond your limits and how that's impacted somebody else to, um, you know, a unique skill or quirk or hobby that you have that might somewhat be beneficial to us. For example, if we've just won a, a fashion client or a sneaker client, it's pretty damn convenient for us if you're a massive sneakerhead. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> or if or if we have a car account, it's pretty handy to us that you're a massive nerd about all the specs and different mechanisms that fit within a car. Yeah. and know how to translate that into a benefit for the driver. That's gold. That Not many people know that. And these are things that are easy to learn, relatively speaking. I mean, all right, it does. It requires a bit more effort to go and read a user manual and a few car blogs, but it really, when you look at the time, if, as long as you apply the focus, it, yeah. it's not that arduous to put yourself ahead of other people who have just cookie-cutter CV, whacked it in with a bit of a cover letter. It's not that difficult to prove to stand out you had a really interesting yeah. point actually, and that's the idea that you know the 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 people's or the direct or the director of people or the or the hr or whatever it's called in the agency those people that are actually looking at the applications initially well not always but of course they're depending on the sky size of the agency there will be a lot of people just submitting a cv you know what i mean with a, a little maybe an email going i'm interested in the job here's my cv but, you know, I think you need to sort of think beyond that a little bit, you know what I mean, yeah. I, and um, demonstrate that passion and willingness and, and all those other keywords which I talked about um, to get that edge or do something slightly different, you know. And um, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting to be absolutely wacky and it's going to get you a guarantee you a job. And, you know, you need to de- you know, demonstrate um, requisite skills, but you also need to, you know, that's other things around passion and commitment and, you know, enthusiasm. They really help. Uh, and like you say, if you if you have a knowledge about a particular brand, you know you need to research the agency in the first place. If you're going for a job that has, say, the Suzuki brand account, you need to under- talk about Suzuki. <laughs> it makes yeah. absolute sense, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, definitely. Well, <laughs> D- David, I think that that brings us to a close for today. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for reaching out and and being one of our uh, our, our first academics on the show. Hey, look, Chris, I'd like to uh, thank you again. I think that this is this initiative is absolutely wonderful. Um, thank you for having me. Oh, no worries, sir.